In this video, we're going to solve this differential equation using Laplace transforms. So in the method of Laplace transforms, the first thing you do is you take the Laplace of both sides of the DE. So let's go ahead and do that. We start off by taking the Laplace of y double prime plus y, and that's equal to the Laplace of all of this. So the Laplace of the square root of two sine square root of two t. So you could have skipped this step, by distributing the Laplace through, because it's linear. Likewise, yeah, I've cut a, I could have pulled out the square root of two, but I wanted to show all the steps. So the very first step is basically apply the Laplace transform to both sides of the differential equation. Then you can use the fact it's linear. So it'll be the Laplace of y double prime plus the Laplace of y. And then that's from linearity. Likewise, we can pull out this constant. So this is the square root of two Laplace sine of the square root of 2 times t. And so we're here. So if I was doing this and I wasn't making a video, I would have started with this step here. So you can just jump into this step. So now we have to use the formulas. There's multiple formulas. Let me refresh your memory in case you've never seen this before. So the first formula says that the Laplace of y is equal to psi of s. I call it pitchfork y. That's just, that's just what I call it. Then the second formula, which we don't need in this problem, but I'll write it anyways for completeness, is s, pitchfork y of s, minus y of 0. And the third formula that we often need is the one for the second derivative. That's going to be s squared, pitchfork y of s, minus s, y of 0, minus y prime of 0. And I will be completely 100% honest. Uh, for me, I think, and for most people, these are extremely intimidating when you first see them. You think, oh my god, how am I ever going to memorize these formulas? Um, the way I memorize it is, this is the first derivative, so it starts at the first power. This is the second derivative, so it starts at the second power. And it ends in one less derivative. So this ends at the zeroth derivative. That's the first derivative. It ends at one less. This is the second derivative. It ends at one less. So that's how I do it. Let's go ahead and apply these formulas over here. So we have second derivative, so it's s squared, pitchfork y of s, minus s, and then notice it ends at the first derivative, so it must be y of 0, minus y prime of 0. Notice the powers count down, too, s squared, s to the 1, s to the 0. And the derivatives count down going the other way, first derivative, 0th derivative, no derivative. So all kinds of memory tricks you can create in your mind to help yourself memorize it if you need to memorize it. Plus, this one's pitchfork y of s. This is equal to the square root of 2. The Laplace of sine of this, so recall, there's another formula that we're going to use here, so I'll refresh your memory. The Laplace of sine kt, this, just remember cosine has the s, sine has the k. So it's k over s squared plus k squared. Okay, so, um, so in this case, k um, is the square root of 2. So it's square root of 2. Oh! look at that. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. I did not know that would happen. I have not done this problem, by the way. So, and then this is s squared plus, and then when you square the square root of 2, you get 2. Oh, happy day. So you get 2 over s squared plus 2. Kind of cool that that happened. That's, you know, it's probably on purpose. Whoever made this problem up decided, hey, let's put that there. So when you multiply them, you get 2, right? Good stuff. Okay. All right. So I'm going to erase all of this and um, let's just keep going. So again, we take the Laplace, we use those cryptic formulas. Um, now we use our initial conditions. So you use them early in the problem, which is very different from other differential equations. So y of 0 is 6. So this is s squared pitchfork y of s minus y of 0 is 6. So this is 6s. So 6s minus y prime of 0, which is 0. I'll, I'll write it even though it's 0, just for completeness, plus our pitchfork y of s. And that's equal to 2 over s squared plus 2. So now what you do is you solve for pitchfork y. Okay, so we can factor out a pitchfork y here. So pitchfork y of s. This looks like it's going to get a little bit harder. This is s squared plus 1, right? That's looking at this one and at this one. And let's add this bad boy to the other side. This is 2 over s squared plus 2 plus 6s. So we're here. Okay, so I have a decision to make. Do I add these up or do I do them separately? Um, I'm thinking. Let's see. So if we divide this by this, we're definitely going to have to use partial fractions you know, to, in order to resolve this problem. 
Likewise, if I have 6s over s squared plus 1, that's also going to take uh, some work. I think I'm going to add these up first and then divide by... Um, no, let's do it separate. Let's do it separate. So pitchfork y of s will be 2 over... Okay, 2 over... And it's going to be s squared plus 2 plus 6s over s squared plus 1. Yeah, this is pretty easy to do by itself, right? This is going to be a cosine, because remember, cosine has the s. Oh, I forgot something here. Really bad. What goes here? This it would make it completely... I was like, wow, that looks easy. That's because we're missing this piece here. Okay. <laughs> if that was gone, the problem would be very, very easy. Okay, so... Now, what we have to do is we have to find the inverse of loss of this, okay? So, because this, if you recall, this is the Laplace of y. So, the Laplace takes y and gives you this. So, the inver inverse Laplace takes this and gives you back y. y is what we're looking for. We're trying to solve this differential equation, so we're looking for y. So, the Laplace of y is equal to this, so the inverse Laplace of this is equal to y. So, the inverse Laplace of this is the answer. So, what makes a question easy or hard is this. You know, if this is hard to work with, then the question's hard. If this is easy, the question is easy. Let's go ahead and rewrite this over here, and then we'll work on the inverse Laplace of all of this. I'm going to erase all of this, okay, and rewrite it uh, over here. So we have pitchfork y of s is equal to 2 over that. So we have 2 over s squared plus 2, s squared plus 1, plus, and then we have 6s over s squared plus 1. So again, this piece is easy. We can use a cosine for this. It's this piece here that causes problems. That's a 2. It's an ugly 2. So let's go ahead and use partial fractions on, on this piece here. So we have 2 over s squared plus 2, s squared plus 1. And so to use partial fractions on this, um, we are going to use the setup as follows. This is as plus b over s squared plus 2. That's because this is quadratic. If it was just like s, or like if it was just s plus 2, it would be a. But whenever it's like s squared plus a number, you have to have something like that. Plus, and then here we have cs plus d over s squared plus 1. Okay, so we're here. So now what we have to do is multiply both sides by this. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do it mentally, but maybe, maybe I'll write it. s squared plus 2 s squared plus 1. That's what we're doing. And then same thing here. s squared plus 2, s squared plus 1. So these will cancel, so we'll just get 2 equals as plus b. So parentheses, as plus b. And then the s squared plus 2 cancels, so we're left with s squared plus 1. So s squared plus 1 plus cs plus d. This problem is hardcore. cs plus d. This will cancel, so we'll get s squared plus 2. So we're here. So now I'm going to erase this so that it's not like in the way. So I'm just, that was just a, a note for, for ourselves so we can clarify our thinking. Whenever you get here, you always want to ask yourself, is there anything you can plug in that will give you one of the answers right away? And the answer is no. Right? There's nothing you can plug in here that will give you one of the variables right away. So we're going to immediately go to equating coefficients. Right? By the way, if you plug in 0, you'll get, you'll get b and d. Right? You won't get just b. So there's nothing you can really do to like find one of the letters. So let's go to equating coefficients. When we do that, we pick the highest power. So in this case, the highest power is 3. So let's look at the s cubed terms. So s cubed terms. So on the left-hand side, the coefficient of s cubed is 0. There's really an invisible 0 s cubed here. So it's 0. And let's see. How this works is, in order to find a term here, you must pick exactly one from each parentheses. So you have to pick one from here, and you have to pick one from here. So let's see. Can we get an as cubed from, from this? Well, if we pick as, we can pick s squared. So that'll give us as cubed, as cubed. So a is the coefficient of as cubed that comes from these two terms. Here, it'll be cs cubed, so plus c. So that gives us our first equation. Okay, now let's go to s squared terms. Just go down the line. Again, there's really an invisible 0s squared here. You could do this. And so the coefficient on the left-hand side is 0. 
Let's see, can we use a to get an s squared? No, we can't, right? So, because we can either get a s cubed or a s, so that doesn't work. What about b? Ah, yes, yes, we can, right? b s squared, so plus b. And then here we can use d, so that's good, so d. Right, we can't use c, right? c s will give us a cubed or an s, so no good. Let's look at the s terms. I'm going to come over here. I don't know why I did it like that. S terms, same thing, you can have a zero S here, so zero. Uh, looks like A S times one, so it'll be A. A S times one, so A. And then here, uh, C S times two, so two C. So two C, so two C. Good stuff. And the last ones are the constant terms. So the constant terms. Well, on the left-hand side, hurrah, it's no longer zero. Two is the constant term. And here we're going to get B. Oh, that worked out really nice. <laughs> I did not do this on purpose. You'll see. And then plus 2D. So I did not do this on purpose. This is a pure coincidence because I have not worked out this problem in months. Um, but look, everything is lined up for us. Uh, that was not intentional. I'm feeling really good right now. So now we have four equations with four variables. So check this out. Let's subtract these. 0 minus 0 is 0 equals A minus A is 0 c minus 2c is negative c. Oh, that means c is equal to 0. But if you plug 0 back in here, that means a is equal to 0. So c and a are both equal to 0. So let me just write that up here. So, so in case you can't see it, I'm not sure if you can. So a and c are equal to 0. So we have that. So now we can do the same thing here. We can subtract. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. b minus b is 0. D minus 2D is negative D. Oh, look at that. So D equals 2 because negative 2 is negative D. So then you plug it back in here, you get B plus 2 equals 0. So B plus 2 equals 0. So B is negative 2. Boom. That worked out really, really, really nice. Again, A minus A is 0. C minus 2C is negative C. So we get C equals 0. Plug it in here, you get A equals 0. And then subtracting these, um, you get 0, you get negative d, so you get d equals 2, plug it back in, you get b equals negative 2. Worked out really nice. So let's plug it back in here. Let's see what we got. So a is 0, so that's gone. So b is negative 2, so we get negative 2 over s squared plus 2. And then c was 0, so and then d is 2, right? d is 2. So this is plus 2 over s squared plus 1. So now we just got to find the inverse plus of this, and we got it. So I'm going to squeeze it in up here. So we can take the inverse of loss of each piece and we can pull out constants. So y is equal to negative 2 inverse Laplace of this piece. Okay. So this is really s squared plus the square root of 2 squared. You might say, what are you doing? I'm using formulas. Okay, I'm using formulas here. So, so this here, uh, the formula we're going to use is this one, the inverse of loss of k over s squared plus k squared is sine kt. Likewise, if you do this with, a, with an s, you get cosine kt. Remember, cosine has the s. So I'm running kind of messy. So I wrote this one down because we still have to add this piece as well, as well at the end. So we have all of this plus this, and we're finding the inverse of loss. So here, we need a square root of 2 because we want to make it match this formula, you see, so k, k. But when you put it there, you got to take it away, like that. And then here we pull out the 2, inverse Laplace, okay, and then we have 1 over s squared plus 1 squared. So our k is 1 in this case. And then we have this piece here, so plus 6, inverse Laplace, I should have erased, <laughs> sorry. This is s over s squared plus 1. Okay, so what just happened? So we got here, and we decided to take the inverse of plus of this, as well as this, right? Because this, this is the same as this. So we take the inverse of plus of this, and then this, and that will be y. So this top one here, this is going to be negative 2 over root 2, sine of kt, so square root of 2t. And this one will be plus 2 just sine t, and the last one is plus 6, and that's a cosine t. And this would be the solution 
to the DE coming from these three terms. I think the hard part is going through the partial fractions, uh, but once you get here, uh, it's it's not too not too bad. So again, once we got this, this piece is this piece. Okay, these are the same thing, and then so y is equal to the inverse plus of this plus the inverse plus of this. So the inverse plus of this is right to these two, and then this is the inverse plus of this. So then that is the final answer. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. Got a little bit messy there at the end, but um, yeah, take care.